In this video, we'll solve example 7.4, which reads, a wheelchair user pauses while ascending a ramp that forms a 15 degree angle with the floor. To hold himself in place, he applies a force of 129 newtons to the hand rims directed parallel to the ramp. Use the free body diagram and forces given below to find F, the force of friction applied by the ramp to the wheels. At first glance, this seems like a pretty complex problem, but I think you'll see that it really doesn't need to be uh, if we use moments to solve it. So uh, let's start off by drawing the wheel. Let's try to reproduce this free body diagram. So one of the forces you're given is this hand rim force H, acts along the ramp, so does this friction force F. That's the force we're trying to find. There's an axle force uh, pulling down, uh, and that is uh, given by A. And then there's the normal contact force, normal to the ramp, and that's given by N. So you're given some magnitudes of some of these forces. So H is 129 newtons. A is 1,000 newtons. Um, N is given as 966 newtons. And finally, we're supposed to find the friction force F. So one way that we could solve this would be to take all the forces that we know and the force that we don't know, add them up, and then we know that that sum should equal zero. Why? Because we're told that this is a static wheel. And when something, when we have a static body, we know that all of its accelerations are zero. It's horizontal acceleration, it's vertical acceleration, and it's angular acceleration are all zero. What this means is that the sum of all the forces acting on the wheel should equal zero in this case. The net force should equal zero. So one way to solve the problem is to add up all the forces, H, A, and N, um, plus F, and set that equal to zero, and then use it to solve for F. But uh, that's going to be a pretty complex solution to the problem. And we would have to break up some of these forces into their uh, horizontal and vertical components. There's actually an easier way to solve this problem that involves another condition of static equilibrium. And that is that the sum of the moments about some point are, is equal to 0. And we're going to have to choose which point it is. Which point do we want to take the moments about? So we could choose the center of the wheel. If we wanted to do that, that seems like a natural place, uh, that point C, let's call it. Uh, we could choose the point of contact down here. The point of contact is not going to be a great choice for us, because if, if we do that, then the, f the moment due to force F, that won't appear in our equation, because force F has no moment about this point of contact down here. Um, but force F does have a moment about point C. Um, Force H also has a moment about point C, uh, but forces A, uh, A and N, they don't. Um, but that's okay, we'll just, we just won't use that information in solving this problem. So what we're going to do in order to solve is we're going to take the sum of all the moments acting on the wheel about point C, and that should be equal to the moment of inertia of the wheel about point C times the angular acceleration. Now, you're not given the moment of inertia of the wheel about point C, but it doesn't matter because the angular acceleration, as we said before, is zero. So this sum of moments is just going to be equal to zero. So now, let's take a look at the forces that have moments about point C. And when we do that, we're going to find that the hand rim force H, it definitely doesn't pass through point C. Its line of action doesn't pass through point C. That force will definitely have a moment about the center of the wheel. So let's write in that moment. Let's write in that uh, the force H times its moment arm, which is 28 centimeters, or I'll write it in here as 0 0.28. Uh, that is a moment acting about point C. And let's choose uh, that clockwise moments that those will be positive. So I'm going to make this a positive moment over here. Uh, the force A, that passes right through point C. That's not going to have a moment about point C. The force N, uh, it doesn't actually act at point C, but its line of action, you can see that line of action, it actually does pass through point C. So the force N will have no moment about point C. Force F, however, that is a force that's going to have a moment about point C. So the force F will have a moment about point C. Its moment arm is also the radius of the wheel, that perpendicular distance, so 0 0.28 meters. And uh, since we said that 
uh, clockwise moments are positive, and this force F is going to make the wheel rotate counterclockwise about point C. I'm going to make this a negative moment. And then that is going to add up to zero. Now it's just a question of solving because we know what H is. We know that H is 129. Um, when I go to solve, I'll notice that both terms have a factor of 0 0.28. So I actually could just divide by 0 0.28 and get rid of those. And what I'm going to wind up with is that the friction force is simply equal to the hand rim force H, or F is equal to 129 newtons. And that is how we solve example 7.4.